I don't want to seem like I'm picking on one of my favorite movies, Avatar. However, it posits as its means of propulsion, the Apex reaction rocket engine, fueled by antimatter. Consequently, it's of great interest, for if it cannot be made to work in theory, then no reaction rocket of any sort is suitable for interstellar space travel. The failure of the antimatter engine does not mean that we can't go to the stars using a reaction engine. It only means that we'll have to take many centuries to get there. As I showed in my previous Avatar video, the energy output of the two engines, when engaged in antimatter propulsion, is over 9 million times greater than the output of the sun at its surface for the same area. Thus, for the Avatar engine, an area equal to about two-thirds of the state of Rhode Island on the sun, produces over 9 million times the energy of 300 square meters, which is what comprises the output area of the Venture's two engines. So the engines must put out energy equivalent to all the energy coming out of the surface of the sun from an area of 2,730 square kilometers and it must do so for six months to get to 70% of light velocity. But in fact, I was being overly generous. The engines must actually output over twice that energy, or 18 million times the sun's output per unit area. The reason is as follows. Pushing a rocket in space is similar to paying off your home mortgage. In the beginning, you pay mostly interest, well, at the end, mostly principal. The purpose of front-loading a mortgage is to prevent you from developing equity so they can visit upon you perpetual debt. For those interested, the bank does not deserve to front-load a mortgage because it does not loan you existing money. It conjures it out of thin air. But this is another story unrelated to physics. In the rocket venue, at the beginning of acceleration, Nearly all the energy is wasted out the rear exhaust, with a small amount being invested in the kinetic energy of the payload. At the end of the acceleration, and if that acceleration is some reasonable fraction of light velocity, and the exhaust velocity approximates light velocity, much more energy is deposited in the craft and less in the exhaust, simply by the nature of the energy bookkeeping process. So the x-axis is time, and the y-axis is power output. Power times time is energy, so the area bounded is the total energy supplied by the burn. Drawing a line diagonally shows the aforementioned problem. Half of the total energy is wasted, while the energy taken up by the payload increases during the course of the burn. No burn will look exactly like this. We need some more inefficiency as in waste heat that is not directed opposite to the direction of acceleration. So our graph might look more like this. Because temperature is related to energy output in a star as the fourth root, we can estimate the Avatar engine temperature by its output at 18 million times the solar output. The fourth root of 18 million is 65 while the surface temperature of the sun is 5,778 degrees Kelvin. So the internal engine temperature of the Venture engine would be 65 times 5,778, which is equal to 375,570 degrees Kelvin, or 375,297 degrees centigrade, which is a tad warmer than a baby bottle full of warm milk. If this logic is applicable in an antimatter engine environment, there is no possibility of maintaining any kind of solid object. The engine turns to plasma instantly. Well, maybe it would last a nanosecond. There are only a couple of things that can happen in the engine context when a proton and antiproton annihilate. Of the two gamma rays formed, one must exit out the exhaust port, that's the wasted half. The other gamma ray can then go through the engine compartment, unimpeded, in which case it is useless as propellant. Or it can collide with the engine compartment, thereby plasmifying whatever it hits, 
thus contributing to the propulsion of the ship at the expense of its disintegration. Or it can collide with the engine compartment and somehow reflect back out the rear exhaust hole, thus giving up the maximum energy to the ship without destroying it. There is no known way to reflect gamma rays, as we do with light. There is no gamma ray mirror. Some recent experiments show that the index of refraction for gamma rays is greater than previously thought, and they might be focused by a lens dependent on electron-positron creation near a nucleus. But this won't allow one to make a full 180-degree turnaround, which is what is needed for propulsions for reasons of geometry. In the movie site, it is claimed that the venture engine, heat sinks, took two weeks to cool down. Let's assume by cool down they mean to go to a dim red color. How much heat can these heat sinks radiate anyway? We can make a ballpark guess by their size and shape. The effective radiative surface area of an object in empty space that is, without conduction or convection into a gas or liquid, is proportional to the minimum convex surface that contains the object. Thus, if the venture radiators had fins all over them, it would be useless since radiation from one fin would simply hit another. What's needed in space is large area unobstructed by anything that prevents the radiation from going straight away out. A fair approximation for the venture is a cylinder around each radiator. The radiators appear to be about 300 meters long and maybe 80 meters wide, so the effective radiative surface is about pi times 80 times 300 times two radiators equals about 150,000 square meters. The maximum temperature they can glow at is the temperature of the surface of the sun. That is, they glow white hot when running for six months. Don't ask how they glow without melting. We'll just give them that. So the engine energy output is equivalent to 2,730 square miles on the surface of the sun, or 2,730,000,000 square meters, while the radiators give off the sun's energy at 150,000 square meters. This means that the efficiency of the engine is minimally, just about theoretically perfect. Or, for every erg wasted as excess heat in the engine, 18,199 ergs go directly into the kinetic energy of the ship. Wow. This efficiency is not approachable except in maybe, um, frozen? Neither can we dump extra energy into the mass of the radiators. This would take very massive radiators made out of lead or iron, and wouldn't even dent the problem. We need to get rid of any excess energy right away, or else melt, and we want those radiators to be as light as possible, because they must go along with the ship. Thus, I conclude that reaction engines for interstellar travel are technically impossible for significant fractions of light velocity, and will remain impossible in perpetuity.